What's up, everybody? Welcome back. My name is Quartez, and uh, I'm going to review a comic. Again, this is No One Left to Fight number two. That is by Aubrey Sitterson, Fika Osio, and Taylor Esposito. This uh, is written by Aubrey Sitterson and uh, Fika Osio on the colors and the actual line work. Like I said in the last video, this character right here is probably the most dynamic character of the series so far. And this issue is actually good. But I would, like, this little tagline right here, the comic you always wanted, I don't know about that. That's just like uh, somebody saying Naruto is the greatest anime or manga of all time. Yeah, that's, that's a... That, that's a subjective or objective uh, type of opinion. But let's get into it. Once again, No One Left to Fight. Awesome title. That's a very good title. Anyway, we have this dude right here who, honestly, I didn't care for what he was saying. He's kind of like one of those extreme versions of uh, the, the 90s stuff like, uh, you know, Battletoads and Biker Mice from Mars and... and, and, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, every, like every anthropomorphic cool dude in the 90s, like the early 90s, this guy is like a culmination of it. Anyway, he's like summarizing the story, so, you know, you can just hear that. Like, even if he didn't have the guitar, it could probably, you probably say, stay out of drugs, kids, and go to school, man. You know, that, <laughs> that type of like cheesy, cheesy in-your-face 90s stuff. So he's saying, you know, oh, hell, my Tomcats and fine felines. And then he's telling you the story, and his name is Billy Von Katz. And then he had a, he apparently had a couple of different things. And he's talking to you like, oh, Vale visited his old allies, Tamora and Krista, ready to travel to the... Because I can't, obviously, not... Like, he's just... He's a rad character. He needs a rad voice. He can't be a, you know... And from what I understand, my hit single. <laughs> you know? So anyway... Remember last time uh, he was going to hit him with the blast barrage? Well, Krista steps in after seeing this obscenely uh, lame big purple glow. <laughs> just coming out of nowhere in the background. And uh, she's like, what are y'all doing? You know, you can't just be fighting people in the backyard. So, you know, obviously she has to step in and they're like, fine, okay, whatever. You know. And she's like, she's like, Getting in a fight the night before our trip in front of the kids? I hope you're proud of yourself. And he's like, no, not proud. Not until I beat him. Like, he just wants to fight. If you tried to boil down Vegeta's character arc and you just kind of knew, like, a passing thing about Vegeta, like, if you didn't know Vegeta from the Saiyan to Frieza saga, but you watched Dragon Ball Z, like, like, in that middle, that middle Garlic Jr. to, you know, Cell, uh, Cell Saga, then you'd probably be like, you know what, yeah, that's exactly Vegeta's motivations. I just want to beat Kakarot. That's, that, that's it. But, you know, anyway, the, the day comes, and this is actually a really confusing transition uh, to me because it kind of feels out of place because it's like, who are they? Now, literally, she's, she's gone from at nighttime She's trying to, like, squelch her husband's, like, nerves. Like, he's like, I'm not going to be proud of myself until I beat him up. Like, I want to beat him down. The kids want to beat him. You want to, you want to, like, sleep with him. I've had enough of this. I want to fight, you know. And then morning time. Who, who are they? And then it's just like, he has, like, fans. Vale just has fans. No one was watching him in the very first issue. He was just walking around town barefoot. Now, all of a sudden, they've tracked him down. Where were they when this big purple light was going on? Like, why weren't people jumping out? I'm like, bail, bail. Instead, they're just like, <laughs> they're just outside of Krista's house. So he goes outside, and they treat this man like Jesus. But I did really like this page. It reminds me of, like, when your favorite wrestler that's coming down and they're shaking all the kids' hands and everything. And, um, you know, and, and they get that loud pop, like the John Cena, where, like, he does his salute and he takes off running to the ring and stuff. But John Cena is one of those polarizing guys where it's like, he's so, I wouldn't say good, but he's one of those guys that you love to hate, but you can't deny what he does for the industry. I feel like that's how they treat 
Bale, like in this story. Like no one's seen what Bale can really do, but he seems he always has this unsure of himself expression on his face. Like I know he's, he's supposed to be humble, but his face is just always like, uh, okay, uh, wh whatever you guys say. You know, like there's no like determination in his face or. I'm gonna beat you like at least Goku was more like you know yeah I want to fight let's do it like Goku was always ready to fight Bale just seems like a you don't really want to do this but we're gonna do it anyway we get some really cool uh, like skimmer type of things um, you know like some good tech that there's always anytime stories like this where people wear like uh, crazy bandages and, and all that stuff on their face I really like when they have cool tech because I don't know it just brings it all together like when you see those post-apocalyptic movies from the 90s and people their names are like slash and, and jump and all that stuff and they have like bandages <laughs> they're always wearing like bandage suits and stuff or piecemeal things but they always have really cool tech that they can salvage which you don't even know how they did it but whatever anyway uh, so this, this, they actually start their journey. They're going to Mistress Harga's house. And basically you get this piece of uh, dialogue right here, which is pretty good dialogue for like, it's it good character interaction. It's like, keep up your training, okay? And this is what Timor is telling his kids. It's like, thank you for saving the city, daddy. We knew you were gonna beat Uncle Vale. And to his surprise, he's like, yeah, I know. But uh, basically what was happening was somebody was like, oh, well, you know, Vale saved the world. And and Tamor is like, well, what about me? I saved the city. And they're like, not just the city, Craig, the world, top flight security of the world, Craig. So it's like his kids respect what he's did. And that's, that's when you're a parent, that's all you really want to hear is, dad, I respect you or you've done something cool. Like I know being a military dad. Your kids don't always tell you you did great. Sometimes they just sit back and they're like, you haven't done anything. All you do is go to the motor pool. Or all you do is go out and you go to the field and you come back. Then you deploy and they don't know what you do. They don't say nothing. And then like Veterans Day comes and all that stuff. And they're just like, happy Veterans Day. But they really don't appreciate anything. So it's just nice. Like as a parent, you come home and your kid is like, Thank you for, you know, for keeping us safe and keeping a roof over our head and all that stuff. Because you're like, yeah, I know. Because without me, you wouldn't have a roof and you wouldn't be doing nothing. You wouldn't even be here. But that's beside the point. So anyway, we get some really cool skimmer drawings. Like, you know, you know. But here's where my first gripe came in. Not with this guy, because he has a really cool design. He looks really sinister. I felt like there should have been more establishing, establishing shots. I didn't even notice this detail before. This uh, buffalo creature looking thing. But I felt like maybe some more long shots on their journey to show you that this is a really far away place. Instead, we get three three long shots and a car drive. And then, hey, we're here. Mistress Harger's house. Ha ha. And then they're... <laughs> and they park on the beach. Which, if you pay attention, the kids are training on the beach. The house, like, that's very, very good. And I was just blown away by the small details. You have these sky catfish koi things. I don't even know what they are. But it was awesome. When I first saw it, I was like, this is, this is crazy, man. Like, they're selling this world to me. And, you know, then I looked at this scene and I was like, oh, okay, well, they're doing some water bending and some fighting and all that stuff. Okay, so we skip a couple of pages and boom, we hit the cool character. Possibly my favorite character so far, Wenda, who, as we, um, you know, she has some feelings for Vale. You know, I missed you, Vale, kissy lips. And then, ha ha, ha love you like a little sister, friend zone, you know. And so she obviously has a beef with Krista because Krista had a thing with Vale and then Krista married Timur and they like they've got this convoluted history that we really haven't been privy to but uh I said I gotta keep going because I don't want a copyright strike or anything but basically Mistress Harga is Vale's teacher and she really likes Vale but she hates Timur she hates him because he ran away and she keeps throwing shade at the man like you know you ran away from my training and you went to a different teacher of the dark arts and everything because, you know, Timor is supposed to be a ninja. You wouldn't know that unless you actually read the interview with Aubrey Sitterson 
and Fico Osio. And, um, you know, they basically have it out over a fire. And he's like, oh, you do the sweet old lady act now, but I don't buy it. I know what you really are. And if you don't know, if you read Dragon Ball, then um, Mistress Harga is supposed to be like Baba. She's supposed to, like uh, Master Roshi's sister. And Baba was the witch, and she was a big deal in Dragon Ball, but then not a big deal. And then, you know, Bale starts having this vision of what it would be like if he would have impregnated Winda, and he would have a little son and then another baby on the way. And, you know, they start fighting, and uh, <laughs> Mistress Harga is like, uh, if you got a problem, then you can go and get some wood and take your wife with you because you're too weak to get it by yourself pretty much. You know, just like uh, get that man some salve for this burn that he just incurred next to this fire. So he's like, uh, you know, he, he gives a little side eye and she's like, yeah, we'll see. So anyway, Bale's sleeping and um, he's impossibly chiseled too. Like, impossibly chiseled. But anyway, and uh, uh, along comes a stranger which she's probably thinking about doing later, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Okay, I'll see myself out. But anyway, she tries to throw herself on Bale in his uh, uh, not naked state, because he's like the he's got the Tarzan thing going, where there's always a loincloth that just happens to cover everything. But he still sleeps in those socks, though. Let me tell you what, like he doesn't even need them because wearing bandages around your feet is just tantamount to just wearing nothing. Like you might as well just just go barefoot but anyway she's like well you know i would love to you know uh do things with you if you just let me which we know that he's probably going to turn it down i mean Bale's one of those guys where he he puts the training over everybody else so anyway we get the cover to this which is the next volume this mysterious menacing dude Vale, and winda it looks like she wants to stop Vale from trying to fight this guy because Vale's looking like he's about that life. He wants to fight. So I want to read this. I want to go. When I go to America's Heroes, I look for no one left to fight. I know it's a monthly book, but I want it now. Like J.G. Wentworth, it's my money and I want it now. Like this isn't the comic I always wanted. Okay, maybe when I was 12, I would have wanted a comic like this. But this is a comic that I do like. But I feel like... I feel like um, if it was, like, five issues, like, thrown into, like, a large format, just uh, even a digest. I mean, a digest would be nice for a story of this type. That's just my opinion, though. I like where it's going. Wenda is... I like her character because she has the most personality out of everybody. Like, you've got Tamor. He's jealous because he thinks Vale is just... He's jealous of Vale because Vale has it all. But he Vale is jealous of Tamor because Tamor has everything Vale wanted. Because Tamor actually stopped fighting and went and got a family. And Vale just kept training. Now he's alone. And he wants Krista, but Krista doesn't want him. And then Wenda wants him, but he probably does not want her. So... I really, I really like this page. This page is a solid page. It, it's, it's good. It tells you everything. Like when I saw this, I didn't even have to read the dialogue to know that she wants to seduce Vale. She wants Vale, and Vale's probably like, I can't. It's not the right time. I'm pretty sure that's what is going to happen in the third um, issue. And uh, then we go here. I really wanted to read the like letters and stuff, or at least like. Aubrey Sitterson's take but no then we get a thing about a cat that travels through space and time and I, I like I like that stuff I like when the artist tells me things that I didn't know or they have like fan art and all that stuff but this is the back of it um they're doing a good job so far because you can tell they like what they're doing nobody seems to feel like they don't care about anything so far but we're two issues in a lot of comics you see these days it seems like the creators don't even really care about what they're talking about. <laughs> they just they just want to write a story and then they're like, OK, I'm done with that. Let's move on to the next one that sells you my propaganda and my ideas. This is literally just like a like an old school beat em up. Like, really? Oh, the president's daughter has gone missing. You and your bad dudes need to go and get the president's daughter back. <laughs> and, you know, uh, only on Nintendo would that work. But actually. Um, also Sega Genesis, because Streets of Rage 2 is 
my one of my favorite games of all time. But anyway, that is the review. No one left to fight. Issue number two. This is Wenda. This is Mistress Harga, and these are random unnamed kids. Don't even know who this kid is because he barely appears in the whole issue. But anyway, let me know what you guys think. Send me a link. Or no, no, no. Don't send me links. <laughs> but uh, send a comment. Like, share, subscribe. Please support the channel. I like talking about cool comics. I like reading cool comics. All right. That's the video. My name is Quartez, and peace out.